In this video, we are going to be adding notifications to our game. Now, when I say notifications, I do not mean Steam notifications. I'm talking about what happens when you do renp.notify in, well, renp. So let me show you what I mean by that. If we go back to renp, I made a test project here. I'm just going to launch this. And when I go to the next line, you'll notice that the notification pops up right there. Hello world. That is the notification I set to pop up here at this line. So let's go to our script. And I'll show you a couple problems with the way RenP does it, in my opinion. Uh, I'm going to uncomment this. If First off, if we have more than one notification, what will happen is it only shows the last notification. So if we hit uh, go to the next line, the hello world did not show up. Also, it stretches across the entire screen before it wraps itself, which I don't personally like. So let's deal with those problems in our own version of our notify. Um, Let's start by adding a border to our canvas panel. And when drag this border behind our click to continue, I'm also going to make it uh, self, I mean, hit test invisible. And if we try dragging this border down, you'll notice that what we ended up dragging is our click to continue instead. That's because our click to continue is on top of our border. And if we want to click on our border instead, we have to make sure, well, we can either move the click to continue out of the way, or we can click this uh, lock button right here. This will make it so that we can't select this. <coughs> so if we try dragging our click to continue now, nothing happens. And if we try to drag our border, we can. All right, I'm gonna move this to somewhere, say, oh, I don't know, uh, 100 by 50. Uh, 100 by 100. Sure. Okay, for now I'm going to add a text to it just to demonstrate why we're going to be doing some things. I'm going to make the text color black so we can actually see it. And you'll notice that it doesn't fit very well inside of our border. So if we go to our border and we hit size to content up here in the slot uh, canvas panel slot thing, you'll notice that it now fits itself around the text. However, if we go to our text and say auto wrap text, sorry, not auto wrap text, the auto wrap text down here underneath wrapping, and we add some more words to this, some more words, you'll see it wraps itself. However, if we get rid of these words, and we say text block, or sorry, get rid of these words first, and then say text block, you'll notice that it doesn't wrap in the same place as it used to. Instead, it wraps automatically at the very first word. Uh, so to fix this, what we want to do is make sure our border is always one specific width. And to do that, we can right click our border, go to wrap width, and wrap it with a size box. The size box allows us to force, well, width and height. So go to our size to content, make sure this is checked. And we'll go to our width override, and we'll just do something like 300. So now the size of our border will always be 300, no matter what our text is. So for example, in our text, if we were to say, hello world, it doesn't get any smaller. And if we say some more words, it makes itself bigger to add some more lines. So that's exactly what we want. Um, let's give it a slight padding of, say, 8. And I'm going to replace this text with... Uh, okay, now it's not showing up. Alright, let's delete this and add the rich text block instead because we might as well and make it prettier. So change the name of rich text block to something nicer like um, notify text block. Here we go. Make sure your text style uh, set is set, otherwise no words will show up. So DT text styles right there. Compile, save, and let's add some animations. How do we add animations? Well, you might have noticed this big area down here that we haven't touched at all. This is where we deal with animations in our widgets. So to add an animation, we can hit this plus animation button right here. We'll call this um, notify animation, animation, here we go. And if we click on it, we can, well, modify our animation. Um, few things about controls, you can mouse wheel to zoom in and out, and you can right click and drag to pan around. Uh, this green line right here is your start of your animation, and this red line is the end of your animation. So wherever that uh, red line is, that's how long your animation thinks it is. 
And this orange thing you can drag around is the current um, frame or time that we're previewing. So let's go drag this to zero, click on our size box, and go to our render opacity and set this to zero. And we'll add an animate. Uh, we'll add a keyframe by clicking this um, sort of weird looking button right here. That will add an that will add a keyframe to our animation. Let's go over to 1.5 and let's add another keyframe. And you notice that the red line dragged itself all the way back to 1.5 because it thinks that that's it knows that that's the last keyframe, so it thinks that's the very last um, that's the end of the animation right there. Uh, obviously, we don't want we don't want it to be invisible the entire time. So let's go to say 1.25 and add a keyframe for one, and we'll do the same thing over at 1.25. Add a keyframe for one. Uh, you notice that we can't actually see these keyframes. We'll be able to see it if we go over here to our tracks and click on render opacity. Also, if your view doesn't look like this, you can um, do that by clicking this show the animation keys in a curve editor right here next to your 20 FPS. And this will just show you all your keyframes across your various, um, well, things that are animated in this animation. <clears throat> if we go back to clicking that though, you'll notice that when we zoom in, these aren't straight lines. In fact, in the middle it actually goes above 1. Over here is 1.2. Uh, to fix these, we can just select all of these by clicking and dragging, and right-click on one of them, make it linear over here instead of auto, and that will make these straight lines. So if we hit play over here, you, you can see what's happening with our opacity. It fades in, and then it fades out after a second delay. I also want it to move down slightly as it's fading out. So let's go back to our first. Um, let's go back to the beginning of our animation, and go to our transform, translation, and Y down here. We're gonna add a keyframe to that, and go all the way to when we start fading away, and add another keyframe with zero. Uh, we can't see it. It's because it's in their transform, translation, Y. There it is. And let's go all the way to the very end and give it a, let's say, negative, or give it a translation of 50 into Y and keyframe that. And you'll notice that the curve got super messed up right there. If we try to hit play, you'll see that's what happens. It sort of goes up a little and drops down. That's not the desired effect. So let's click on these. Sorry, let's select these, right click, and make it linear. And that's exactly what I want. It fades in, stays for a bit, fades out as it drops down. So that's going to be the animation for our notify text. If we go to our graph to add some functionality for that, um, let's go all the way to the bottom here, right click and say custom event. We'll call this notify. And when we notify um, the players of something, we need to add well, we need to know what we're notifying them of. So let's add a new variable for this. This is going to be text. And we'll call this notification. And it didn't set for some reason. Notification. That is very strange. It's probably because of a bug due to my last attempt at this. Um, I'll just call this notify text. Okay. So when we notify our player, let's get our notify text block and we'll say set text and that text is going to be our notify text to target text remember that's the function we made in our visual novel library to automatically style it and then we're going to get our animation from our variables there's this now there's now an animation drop down here we can click on that and drag our notify animation here and say play animation there are a couple things about this we can change. We're not going to change anything about it though because we want the start time to be at zero. We only want one loop. We want it to play forward with a speed of one. So let's test this. If we compile and go to our level blueprint, um, let's say spacebar. So whenever we hit spacebar, what we want to do is, I promoted it to a variable, by the way, the widget up here. Um, 
So we can get our widget and we can say notify. And what we're going to notify is let's just go with hello world. Compile, play, and you'll notice that the notifications are already visible even though there's, we're not notifying them of anything yet. To fix that, we can just go back to our designer, um, go to our notify or go to our notify animation. Let's see, go to our render opacity. Let's drag this somewhere near the middle, the um, current frame, I mean. And without setting it, without hitting this keyframe button, we'll go to our render opacity, type in zero, and compile and play again, and it's no longer visible. All right. So let's hit spacebar. And nothing happened. What is our level blueprint saying? Okay, because our widget has focus, it sometimes won't. Um, the level blueprint won't think that we have focus. There it is. So we hit spacebar, and it shows up. Hello world. It fades in. Hello world, and then fades away as it goes down. However, if we keep hitting hello, if we keep hitting spacebar. You'll notice that the animation doesn't finish, and it just goes to the next um, notification. So let's fix that. If we go back to our dialog, go to our graph, instead of directly um, doing all this stuff as soon as we notify, what we're going to do is we're going to make a notification queue. So let's add another variable to our um, dialog. We'll call this notification queue, and this is going to be a text array. Here we go, compile, save, and instead of directly doing this, we're going to just add to our notification queue, get notification queue, add the notify text. And after we add the notify text, what we're going to do is we're going to check to see if our notify animation is playing or not. So is playing. We're going to branch on that. If it is playing, we're not going to do anything because we're automatically going to set it to check for the next notification after it's done playing. However, if it isn't playing, we are going to do this stuff. So, well, before we do this, or actually, yeah, we're going to set our text to be our two target text right here. But instead of getting our notify text, we are going to get our notification queue and we're going to get the first one. So, get, um, there's two options here for get. We can get a copy or get a reference. In this case, it doesn't really matter, but we're just going to get a copy. And we're going to get the very first one, so number zero. In other words, the oldest notification. After that, we need to remove it from our notification queue because uh, we know that we now did that notification. So, go to our notification queue and say remove index and we're going to remove index 0. After that we will play our animation and after we play our animation we're going to wait. We're going to delay and this delay time is however long our animation is. So if we go back to our designer I believe it was 1.5 seconds. There it is. So duration is 1.5. After we delay, we're going to, let's add a reroute node just to make this nicer to look at. So after we delay, we're going to check again to see if there, or sorry, we're going to, I did this in the wrong order. After we delay, we're going to get our notification queue. We're going to say, hey, do we have any notifications left? So length. If the length is greater than zero, so if we do have a notifi notification left, then we go to these reroute nodes and we'll connect this, this back to our set text up here. Alright, so what should happen is when we add a notify, or when we tell our uh, widget we're notifying them of something, we're going to add it to our notification queue. After that, it's going to say, are we already playing our notification animation? If we are, we're just going to let it play itself out. And when it, done, when it is done playing itself out, it will see if there's any more notifications, and it automatically plays the animation again with the next notification. Otherwise, we'll make it play the animation with the notification 
I am not sure if that made any sense, but I hope it did. Let's go back to our level blueprint and play again. Move this out of way and hit spacebar. Come on. Spacebar, there it is. Hello world. And if we spam spacebar, you'll notice that it waits until it's done playing, until it goes to the next one. And we're not pressing spacebar anymore, but it keeps showing our next notification until it runs out of notifications to show. I pressed spacebar a few times though, so this should probably take a little bit, and there it is. Once, it's run, once it runs out of um, notifications, it stops playing the animation. So if we hit spacebar again, it shows the next notification. Okay. Obviously we don't want to notify by using spacebar, however, so let's give it a, get rid of this spacebar, compile, and let's go to our test dialog. How about over here, when we give them a gift, we'll also add a enter event. Another enter event, I should say. So let's add another enter event. The participant is going to be widget, and it's going to be a modify name. Um, the reason we're using modify name is because we want to tell it to do something, passing in, well, the text we want to notify them with. So modify name, all that is, is a function that gets called. We don't need to make the modify name modify something, a variable I mean. So the name we're going to modify, we'll call this notify, notify. And the value name is going to be well, whatever we're going to be, not, um, whatever our notification is. So let's go with something like um, Isferia likes you more now. Exclamation point. And we need to set up that functionality in our dialog. So let's go to our interfaces dialog callback modify name value. Here it is. Once again, we have to switch on our switch on name for our value name. And if the name is notify, what we're going to do is we're going to notify, uh, call the notify function, passing in our value name. Otherwise, we're just going to return. So let's test that. Compile, saves this, press play. What is your name? I'm Trash. Nice to meet you. Give a gift. There it is. Asphyria likes you more now. And that did not wrap appropriately. That is interesting. Why did that not wrap properly? Um, if you go to our textiles, where is it? Outline size, color, shadow. Sorry, why am I looking at my textiles? I cannot think right now. Um, back to our dialog. Go to our designer. Our notify text block. Here it is. Auto wrap text. I never actually checked that. Make sure that is checked. Okay, compile, save, and try that again. What is your name? Trash. Nice to meet you. Give a gift. It's for your likes you more now. And we can do this a lot of times, and now it just um, plays our. No it just shows us our notifications queue one by one. Okay, um, this is actually a little big. The text, si I mean, the font size, I mean. But that's fine. I'll just make the size box slightly bigger. Let's go 500. I'll save play. This doesn't actually matter. This is just aesthetics. Alright, that works for me. I'm also going to make this slightly darker. Uh, border, brush color, make it darker. Great, so that's our notification system. I'm I hope that wasn't too confusing. I know that I sort of wasn't able to think throughout this video, but hopefully that won't be the case for the next videos. And I'll see you then.